These are the ethics of permaculture. So now maybe we're going to get into <coughs> how to build a permaculture garden. About 25 minutes uh, to learn that. Let's see what we can do. So there's three phases that we're undertaking here at UMass building this permaculture garden. The first phase is sheet mulching, which is a no-till, labor-saving, multi-purpose gardening technique. It's all about improving the soil, remediating the soil. Because as we learned, the soil is pretty bad in a lot of places. Then after you do this, after you remediate the soil, you can design, design the landscape, design how you want the garden to be and what you want to be in. It's really important to do that design work and take a lot of time with it. Do things very intentionally. The reason for that is once once things are already implemented, once they're already in there, it's a lot harder to move things around. If you draw it out on paper, it's really easy to just take that little drawing and move it somewhere else. But it's a whole other thing when you actually have it in there. And then the third stage is all about implementation. So what is sheet mulching? Let's talk about that for a minute. Sheet mulching is building on what's already there. So as we said, it's no killing. Because when you till the land, Ever know the telling this? You come in usually with a rototeller, and you go, boom, 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 and it turns everything upside down. And a lot of people do that, and that's okay. But think about it for a second. What does rototilling do to the little microorganisms that are just living in there? One day, they're just hanging out, <coughs> and then this big thing comes in and just turns their whole home upside down. Now, how would you feel if someone came into your house and just made a huge mess and turned your entire house upside down? Probably not so good, right? So let's not do that to them. If we sheet mulch, we don't have to. What we do is we build on what's already there just by layering. We do three different layers, a compost layer, a barrier layer, and then a mulch layer. This compost layer can be any sort of organic material, like peat moss, leaves, grass cuttings, manure, bedding, anything like that. It's really ideal to have finished compost because then you don't have to wait so long to plant. On top of that, you put a barrier layer, such as cardboard or newspaper, even paper scraps. And then right on the top, you put a mulch layer. Now, this is one way to do sheet mulching. A lot of people will do it differently. They'll put the barrier layer right on the bottom. And by on the bottom, I mean, say you're planting right onto an existing grass base, or right on top of an old field, but you're just putting this right on top of it, just layering right on what's already there. You can put the cardboard down first, and then more organic material like compost and wood chips on the very top. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, and I would say experiment. See which way works best for you, because every site is going to be a little bit different. This is just a visual of what it looks like. So we have wood chips right on the very top here. We have cardboard overlapping it so that the wood chips don't mix with the compost. Compost on the bottom and grass as the existing base. So what we're trying to do is we're transforming an entire grass lawn into a highly productive, aesthetically pleasing permaculture garden just by doing this simple process. Does everyone understand sheet mulching now? Pretty simple, right? It's really simple. Before you do sheet mulching, you want to do a soil test. And what we did here at UMass was we took 12 holes from the site right in front of Franklin Diamond Colony. We dug them and we mixed them all together in a bowl using a soil pour. And then we took a sample from that bowl and we sent it to a soil lab, the one that we have right here on campus. We got our soil test back, we got our results, and we found out what our soil was lacking in. So that's really an important step before you sheet mulch, is find out what's in your soil. What do you, what do you have there? It's just part of your site analysis and assessment. And then you can go through the sheet mulching process. So like I said, it's no-till, but what you want to do is you still want to reduce the compaction. That's 
that's one thing that Rotosome does here. It makes it light and airy and fluffy. What you can do instead is just aerate the soil with digging forms. Just like you would stick a fork into a potato, you stick a fork into the ground and you just lift up. And that reduces the compaction but doesn't disturb the ecosystem nearly as much. <coughs> and after that, you do the layering. So the first part we did at UMass was we layered the finished compost right on top of the lawn, about three or four inches of it. We also added soil amendments. Like I said, when you do your soil tests and you find out what your soil is lacking in, you can get different amendments. There's a lot of, a lot of things out there. What we got was rock dust. It was just different minerals that we got from a local farmer. His name's Dan Kittredge in North Brookfield. He gave us all the minerals that our soil was lacking in. We mixed it with the compost, and we put that right on top of the grass. And then we got a whole bunch of cardboard, lots of cardboard. That truck probably would have had to get filled up many, many times for all the cardboard we needed. But when you have a lot of people doing it, it can actually be fun getting cardboard. You can make it a lot of fun. So the thing you have to do is you have to remove all the tape and the stickers from each piece of cardboard. And again, that can be really tedious, but if you have six of your best friends standing around a trash can, peeling cardboard, or peeling tape off cardboard, that also can be a lot of fun. We did that for about two weeks, and it's actually one of my favorite jobs that we did when we were making this lawn transformation. You want to also overlap the cardboard when you lay it down by about six inches. Because if you think about it, if you just have two pieces of cardboard and you put them next to each other, like this, the weeds or the grass can go through that little crack. But if you overlap them, it's not gonna get through. And then you put your mulch layer on top, which is just wood chips. You can also put the grass clip in, it's the yard waste. There is no waste in permaculture. Everything can be used again in the garden. This is a recap. Do your soil tests, aerate the soil, and then add these three layers of sheet mulch. Do you all get it? You know the first day is pretty good now, right? It's pretty simple, but does it actually work? So let's explore a couple places that actually use this very method. The first one is a place in Holyoke, Holyoke Mass, about 25 minutes from here. And this is what happened. This is 2004. The designers of this site were Eric Tonsmeyer and Jonathan Bates. They live in the middle of Holyoke. They have this urban backyard that, as you can see from this picture, has some of the worst soil that you can imagine. When they were digging in it, they found asphalt. They found all these different things that you don't want in the place where you're going to be growing your vegetables. They actually called some of the things they found urbanite. They just made up that name for it. So what they did was they sheet mulched this entire plot of land, a quarter of an acre, or an eighth of an acre, back in 2004. And about four years later, that's what it looked like. So they managed to make this model permaculture garden in their own backyard, and they're producing almost all of the food that they consume. All the produce, I should say. Everything in their garden serves multiple functions. It's a permaculture principle. Everything serves at least three functions or three purposes in your garden. For instance, let's look at this one plant, comfrey. Comfrey is a really great plant. It's a dynamic accumulator. It's also a habitat nook. It's home for spiders and other insects in your garden, especially during the winter. It's also great for adding to your compost because as it is a dynamic accumulator, it pulls up nutrients deep from the ground from its taproot. Pulls it up for the other plants around it, like fruit trees. You can also cut those leaves off and add it to your compost. And it's going to add those rich nutrients to your compost. In addition to plants, physical structures in your garden can serve multiple purposes. A trellis, for instance, can be a great place for rest and relaxation. It can also be a place where you actually grow food vertically. You can grow grapes or hardy kiwis on a trellis, and it adds this really aesthetically pleasing element to your garden. So just think, instead of 
planting something and it's just got one purpose, why are we putting it there? If we move it somewhere else, maybe it could have more purposes. Or maybe this one plant should be replaced with this one that will benefit the other plants around it. These are some of the things that you think about in the design phase. Just one more case, or a couple more case studies. This one was at Hampshire College in 2008. And they transformed a quarter acre lawn, or a really degraded site, by sheet mulching it. That's more what it looks like now. Just by sheet mulching, just by doing a design, turn that land into this. And this is only two years. So that was 2008, we're in 2010 now. We didn't have to wait five years for the results. We're gonna look at one, this is my yard. This is what I did for my graduate thesis project. I transformed my entire front yard into what I call a yarding, an entire front yard garden. This is 2009, this is last year. About a year ago, a little more than a year ago today. This is what my front lawn looked like when we went through the sheet mulching process. So what are we doing here? Aerating the soil, and then compost, and then cardboard, and then wood chips. And then, when you put up a sign, you tell people. Because you want to make this known. You know, this is very easy to do, and a lot of people could be doing it. And a lot of people could be doing garden, gardening, but they're a little bit afraid. I've heard so many people say, well, I don't have a green thumb, Ryan. I can't do this. I say, are you kidding me? You can totally do this. Aerate, compost, cardboard, wood chips. Put up a sign. In the spring, that's when you plant. Now, over winter, the wood chips got a little bit sun bleached. They looked white. And they didn't look very good. So I needed to do something. I needed to plant. This is in March. About a month and a half later, that's what it looks like. So a month and a half after you plant, that's what it can look like. And that's what Franklin Dining Commons is going to become here at UMass. 